Hello everyone, welcome back for the second video tutorial of part 2. So for this part 2, we are going to consider the use of the business logic for class definition. So in this example, I will introduce one example. Let's say you want to support the weather report okay, for different maybe country, um, city. Okay. So in this case, what we want is we want to support the temperature for each city. So let's say that we are going to use that one in Thailand for now. So therefore, uh, most of the temperature in Thailand will be measured in Celsius. So that is why let's go ahead and do this from scratch. So just like usual, we have main function. Then we are going to have the new class. Okay, let me put it this way. So this is going to be the end of the script. This is the class of um, the weather. Okay. And then in this class, we will report something like temperature. Okay, so we are going to use double temperatures. And we will have the name of the city like this. Okay, and just sim simple like this. Then what we can do is we can create a constructor. So go ahead and put vectors and semicolon and brackets this oh, first required this dot temperature comma required this dot city so that's going to be our constructor then you can simply create the new list so we're going to have a list of vectors and let's call list number one equal to and then in here you create two different objects let's say we have um, weather so it's going to be vectors for uh, temperature of let's go for city first so city of Bangkok let's say Bangkok BKK and temperature tem temperature is equal to let's say 36 okay and um, we have another one so we have weather in another city let's say something like New York and the temperature is about um, let's do this for let's say 20 Celsius. Okay, now I'm going to add one more thing. Um, I'm gonna put what we call content. Um, I'm gonna put, yeah, just keep it simple first. Okay, and you can see that we can always use for loop, and we can say in the list number one each time we got the weather objects. So that's gonna be weather the view, and we can print out. Okay, two information. So the first information is gonna be. Uh, w.city name has temperature equal to temperature equal to dollar size and bracket again the reason I use this bracket because because now this is not really just uh, the variable for text or number it's the representation of object right so if you want to have access to uh, the property or information of that object then you need to have brackets same thing over here so we want to have access to the temperature okay and say my colon all right so when we print it out you got two different weathers for uh, weather report bangkok and new york and okay good imagine that uh, this this is the good one you use it every day but uh, for some reason, maybe tomorrow, your boss come in and say, I want to make conversion from this report into Fahrenheit. So as you can see, um, you're going to have to make your adjustment so that you can support the Fahrenheit as well. Okay, so what we want is that now we can just go ahead and looking at this way. So you can put... Uh, the unit as the string and over here you can put required this dot unit and for the unit we're going to use C to represent Celsius and F to represent the Fahrenheit so over here we're going to say that in Thailand then we use Celsius then we can say unit is going to be the C1 and in New York they're going to use the Fahrenheit as usual then put the F for example and when you make the report okay so you want to make sure that you look up the unit first before you make decision about this output okay 
Now you can see that there should some you should have some internal mechanisms that allow us to make conversion right directly into our object so that when I print out this temperature then um, it's gonna give the correct one okay so therefore what we can do is that as you can see in the class definition you know that one part of this defi um, the, the member for the class definition could be what we call the variable or information decalation okay and you can have the constructor to initialize the data then this is the end of the class you can now add your logic to make okay to make a temperature conversion all right so what I can do is that I can add the new function as the new logic to make conversion so what I can do is that I can represent this as the new function uh, the function name let me call display temperature display temperature and since this is the function so you need to have the parentheses and the brackets okay all right now internally now this function will be able to have access to this information if you study this previously in part number one you know that you can take any information as the input and you can utilize the input right in the parentheses but just to keep in mind that in the class definition okay the um, information that have been declared right in here the function have ability to have access to these references so for example this is the end of the function now I can say I can print out okay the value of my temperature so I'm gonna say temperature directly here okay this temperature can have access from here okay and then what I can do is that uh, instead of I I'm just gonna keep it this way so I'm going to copy this and then put it down here and you can make the comparison because you can see the comparison so um, what about if I just make the comment for this and instead of have have accessing to the temperature directly from this variable then we're gonna call this function instead so over here you can say the view dot display feature now when you make the function call make sure that you also include the parentheses this function doesn't take any input so that is why you just put only the parentheses like that now let's run this one you can see what it does is the same thing except that uh, the data is not there so when you're trying to reference to the um, over here you say the city have the temperature and then we want to print this out okay so you can see this is not part of our game because we want to print out the city name and also the temperature as well so therefore it is better if we can do it this way so we can just simply put all together this way display temperature and we can input this as the part of our printout so therefore let me copy this what about if we start from scratch so that you can learn from this as well so we want to print out okay the city name the city name is coming from here so you say dollar sign um, city okay and then um, has temperature okay um, equal to and then you put the dollar size again one more time and then you put the temperature okay and over here what you do is that you display this output then you line this project one more time and this time they say that BKK has temperature equal to 36 okay and uh, NY has temperature equal to 20 okay all right so this way you can see that now um, you can show the output so instead of print it out this way you can just wrap this one as a business logic here and then we can call the business logic via the object reference okay now since because we're gonna print this out okay so what we should do is that we should not just print this again one more time so that is why what you can do is that you can just call this function directly if you notice this because when you call this function it's already print this out this information for that particular object so for example 
they loop to the first object from here. So the build represent the first one. So what it, it does is that for this object, they call this display temperature. And um, over here, because this belong to this object, when they print out, they're going to print out CD, which is BKK. When they print out the temperature, it's going to be the CCAT. Okay. Same thing if they loop to the second object, when they print it out, they take NY, which is New York, for this city, and they take F for this temperature. I'm um, sorry, they take 20 for the temperature. Okay. All right. Let's try again one more time. And as you can see, that's the output. Now, the only concern that I have is that uh, I want to print it out correctly because this time it's just print this out and um, the units is not good because we don't know what it is, right? So what we want to do is that if, okay, the units is the Celsius, you don't have to do anything. You can print this out directly. But if the units, if F, I want to make conversion as well. So that is why this is what we need to do. So we say if the unit. Now you might say, Ajahn, why don't we put the dollar sign? Keep in mind that the reason I use the dollar sign right here is because this variable is referenced inside double course right here. So this is not part of the static text. So therefore, if you want to refer to the value of this variable, you put the dollar sign. But normally when you utilize the variable, you just reference to the variable name without the dollar sign. Okay, so we say that if the unit is equal equal to ccat, you can directly print this out. You can directly print it out this way. So we say we call this one if the unit of this object, which is c, then we print this out. Okay, l. Okay, if this is not the case, so what we want is that we have to convert the temperature temperature into Fahrenheit first and then display the output. So that's two steps. Step number one, we need to make conversion. And then step number two, we can display it out. So we have learned that in order to convert the temperature from Celsius into Fahrenheit, what we can do is um, we can now have the Celsius value, which is the temperature divided by 5 and then multiply by 9 and all together minus oh sorry plus 32 okay so this is going to be our conversion so allow me to say this is going to be result so we take the temperature for this particular objects and then we convert it into the Fahrenheit using this formula here and then what you can do is that you can now just print this out but let's take a look at this closely previously you can print it out directly CD and the temperature over here you can use CD directly but for the temperature because the temperature has been transformed already into Fahrenheit so therefore you have to reference to the result okay so this way you can also say um, you can have like this the unit okay like C and over here like F So over here, then you're gonna get to different information now one is going to be 36 Celsius and New York have temperature in 68 Fahrenheit Keep in mind that when you collect the data when you store the data those number is in the same unit Which is Celsius when you want to print it out. That's another way so let me put this all together so you can see this in a single statement. Uh, sorry, single screen. So first, okay, let me minimize what we have done so far. Let me minimize everything right here. Okay. All right. So first, we start up with the main function. Then we create a class weather. We include three different information, temperature, city, and the unit. Then we create a constructor for this and then we go to the main one and then we create three different um two different objects okay these two objects is part of this list this name the name of this list is list number one which is the list that support the list of weather items or weather objects and then what else and we just equip this class with the new logic okay so in addition to valuable decalation and constructor you can also include 
the new function implementation as the new business logic. And then what you can do is you can now just use the if else. Okay, so if the unit is equal to C, then it's going to just print out the CD name plus the temperature itself directly. So that is why you got this number right here. Then if this is not the case, this is happens when the second object, you can see that the unit has the value equal to F. So therefore, this is not true. When it's not true, it's come down and then perform the conversion first. So they convert the temperature value into the Fahrenheit and then show this Fahrenheit result right here. And that is how you get this number. Okay, so hopefully this can allow you to visualize the ways that for the class definition is not only used to support information and the constructor, but you can also include the logic so that whenever you loop to each of the object from the list, you can also directly call the logic or the function directly via the object reference. Now, whenever you put the function like this inside the class definition, okay, function inside, I would say function implementation inside the class definition we will call the function as methods okay so from now on when I say create a new methods create a new logic or create a new function in the class definition it's the same thing okay all right so let me also put this one as another code for you so that you can follow it and you can do this by yourself as well. All right, so I think that should be all for, let me save this as the court. Court um, to that too on the desktop. Okay, so we have done this discussion about how do we add more logic into the class definition. And again, you don't need to implement only one logic, you know, you can implement more than one as you like. Okay, so for example, over here, you can have another function to represent display condition, weather condition, display weather condition. And then you can say if the temperature, temperature is greater than, um, let's say, 28, then print out the weather is hot and the weather in the city which is dollar sign city is hot L then you print the same thing the weather in the city is nice so with this one what you can do is that you can now just go over this one and call another function or another method to display weather condition. Okay, and put semicolon at the end. And this way, then you can have another logic that print out this as well. For example, you want to interchange and you say this time I want to print out weather condition, not directly the temperature value. You can see that this is the outcome. All right, so throughout the design process, when you start working with the UI design procedure in Flutter, then we are going to adopt these kinds of things as well as the mechanisms that allow you to, you know, display things with the condition. All right, so let me update your code one more time. So this is going to be code for part number two. Okay, so hopefully if you have any question about anything at all, please let me know. So in the next video tutorial, we will focus our discussion on reusability. We call them class inheritance. Okay, until then, I'll talk to you in the next video. Thank you.